Have you noticed at this point how I'm kind of a make-it-yourself kind of girl? I am because I'm cheap and I'm environmentally conscious. <laughs> everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy that you wanted to join me today because today we are once again talking about zero waste beauty and makeup and self-care. It's been a really long time since my last video about this subject and I like to update you guys just every once in a while uh, on this matter. And it's also one of the most fre frequently requested videos so here we go again. Today I have 20 different zero waste tips, hacks or products for you to see. I hope this is going to be helpful in one way or another. Maybe you know some of these already, maybe some of these are completely new. That's what we're here for, so let's just get started. The first one is something I only realized was a thing a couple of years ago, and it's this Mimikaki stick. I am quite certain that's what it's called. If it's not, feel free to, I mean, just correct me down below, it's completely fine. So what it's called doesn't really matter, it's more what it does that is interesting. It's this tiny stick, oh and as you can see mine is a little bit dirty, that's because I tried to mix some uh, lipstick with it. It's this tiny bamboo stick with a slightly, I mean it's a tiny little shovel on one end and what this is is a completely zero waste alternative to q-tips because normal q-tips like ear cleaners they are usually made with cotton and plastic and sometimes with bamboo or plastic but they are disposable so you cannot use them more than once and i'm not there for that at all and honestly the best thing you can do ever is to just not clean your ears whatsoever because they are self-cleaning and when you clean them you just more wax builds up and it's like a whole thing but sometimes I do like to use one of these so I rarely rarely use it but when I do so a lot of you guys ask me but Gita how do you get this amazing shiny shiny hair no one ever asks me that. Some time ago I realized that the water here in Aalborg is really really harsh, there's a lot of calcium in it and that can really take a toll on your hair. So what do you do? What do you do? Instead of going out and purchasing expensive products in packaging, plastic packaging, I use apple cider vinegar. This is completely normal store-bought apple cider vinegar, you can also get it in bulk somewhere and what I do is that I cleanse my hair after having washed it with my shampoo. Um, I cleanse it with apple cider vinegar and then I fold it up into like a towel hat um, and then that's it. The apple cider smell, um, like, like the, the vinegar smell, it's kind of harsh in the beginning but it slowly evaporates into the air and just leaves your hair squeaky clean and nice. A thing that I haven't thought about in years and years and years is nail files. Um, honestly because it's not something I've prioritized a lot I have always had really short nails but recently I've started to grow my nails out and that has sort of created a need for a nail file and when I look at nail files like in stores and beauty stores and in, in grocery stores they usually come with a plastic handle and they're usually also disposable you can maybe use them a couple of times but at some point you will have to throw them away you will have to create sort of trash so I started to look for an alternative to a conventional nail file and I found it in this little pouch is a sandstone you can't you, it's here we are. This is a sandstone and what this does is that it files at your nail in a completely similar way to a conventional file. But this one will literally last you forever. Um, I know someone who has had a stone like this for 20 years. So what you do is that you file your nail on this here end, you put it underneath your nail and then you file at it, leaving the residue here instead. Um, and when this grows dull and when you've used it too many times, you can just sort of file it at a like a staircase or something made out of stone and go back to its normal shape. The next thing is related to deodorants because I have always used one of those roll-on deodorants and those are really, really wasteful. There's plastic packaging, there's a plastic bowl, it's a lot. And spray deodorants aren't really that much better because you cannot reuse the packaging. So what do you do instead? I actually found um, this. This is a deodorant in a cardboard packaging, you push it up like this, it's completely vegan and I love, love, love these. There's a couple of different brands that actually make these sort of cardboard deodorants, so you can find them in different places. I've heard a lot of zero waste tips regarding makeup removing. The most common one is using coconut oil, but I actually 
don't advise you to do that because coconut oil is an oil that changes shape and I've actually heard that when you use coconut oil on your face when it's liquid it can get in your eyes and then it will sort of stiffen behind your eyes and you'll have to wash it out it's it's like literally my worst nightmare so instead of using coconut oil which changes shape depending on its temperature I like to use an oil that is the same consistency no matter what sort of temperature it's in. So jojoba oil or almond oil is really, really good alternatives and will get your makeup off in a second. You can also use olive oil because usually a lot of people have that in their house already. But you can also buy stuff because capitalism. When I was in Brussels, I found this in, it's stained because of the bag that it was in, it's a whole thing. I found this in Lush. This is a thin, thin piece of soap. Um, and what you do, you use this as a normal makeup wipe, like you wipe it on your face uh, with a little bit of water and then it's soap so it cleans off all your makeup. When it comes to makeup removal, um, I have used these like cotton disposable rounds for ages and ages and you don't have to do that at all. You can get reusable rounds. You can actually just cut these out of like an old t-shirt or like some linen or something. You don't have to buy them. But having something that you can reuse over and over is a really, really really good alternative to disposable rounds. So I throw these in the wash every time I've used one and that's it. It's super, super easy. So I guess in most like uh, convenience stores or dollar stores or like discount stores, you can always get these really colorful uh, plastic synthetic loofahs. And I guess they're really, really good and practical, but they aren't that sustainable. Instead, haha, you can get a natural loofah or a natural sponge and it does the exact same job. I have this. I love this to bits and I use this as an exfoliant on my skin when I'm in the shower. Works so well. Another thing you can do when you're in the shower is, if you can find it, get a few leaves or a few branches of eucalyptus and tie it around uh, your shower head because the steam that creates is so, so healthy for your skin and for your hair and for your breathing. It's really, really good. So I also definitely recommend that. It's like a cute little, it also looks amazing, but it's a cute little zero waste wellness hack, I guess. As you may know, I make a lot of my own makeup. I've tried to make concealer and mascara and lipstick and blush and foundation all kinds of things and the zero waste tip you can take from this is that there's a lot of beautiful pigments in natural ingredients so stuff like beads or activated charcoal or turmeric can be really 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 useful when you're trying to make your own makeup i have so many tutorials so go down to see what they're all about but using natural pigments rather than synthetic is always a good idea so i'm not one of those people who makes their own soap um primarily because I think it's kind of dangerous and I don't really want to get into it. It seems really, really complicated, but I reuse all my old soap, soap. I reuse all my old soap scraps sentences. Um, so whenever I have something that falls apart, like this is an old um, shampoo bar, I put it in a little container and I save it because down the line I can remelt them all together and create a new soap piece. So this is what happened here. You can see there's a lot of different soaps in this. I've used this quite a lot. It was twice as big. There's also a hair in it, so that's cool. I have a tutorial of that as well on my blog, but it's super, super easy. Remelt them in a double boiler and then shape them together when they're sort of cooled off again. So when I step out of the shower, I really like to use some sort of oil in my hair because I don't use conditioner, because I don't use that many products, but an oil can be really, really beneficial. And again, you can use basically anything. Um, I'm using this botanic hair oil at the moment and specifically I apply a little bit in my tips and in my roots and just let it work its way upwards and downwards. Super, super easy and you can use anything you want. Have you noticed at this point how I'm kind of a make-it-yourself kind of girl? I am because I'm cheap and I'm environmentally conscious. So a thing that I've made so many times, I've given it as presents as well, is a homemade scrub. This is a scrub made with salt and olive oil and rosemary and it works well on your skin, on your lips, wherever you want to use a scrub. It's really, really cool and healthy and yeah, completely zero waste and cheap. Another thing that I made, it was one of the first things I made myself ever and I still use the ingredients from that time so it lasts for a really, really long time, is the homemade body butter, you guys. 
You mix one part of shea butter, one part of coconut oil, one part of cocoa butter together in a double boiler, let it rest, whisk it together, kapow. It becomes kind of hard, that's what she said, but it's still perfectly fine to use. I'm always at the bottom of this jar, but I have another jar in my bathroom ready to use. And it's the only lotion moisturizer that I have used for five years. So I actually made two posts slash videos this summer about sunscreens because there are a lot of problems with the chemicals in sunscreens. But I found two zero waste alternatives in that period of time that I also just would like to show you. The first one is from Amazing, like like sink, it's, it's funny. And it comes in a aluminum container, which I mean, I can appreciate. It looks like this. And the other one is from Fair Squared and it comes a little glass container. This one is also Fair Trade, which is really, really lovely. And these come in sustainable packaging and they also do not contain any of the awful chemicals like oxybenzone that kills our reefs and our fish. Double win. <laughs> Mouthwash is something that I've heard a lot of people request me talk about, but I've never really actually used it, so I'm not the best person to ask. But one thing that I know does function as a mouthwash that I've used for other reasons is uh, oil pooling. And I have an oil pooling product from uh, uh, Geo Organics. And how this works is that you take a spoonful of oil and you have it, you just wash it around in your mouth for about three minutes and it removes stains and bacteria and it's it's really, really good. I've only heard good things about people that tried old oil pulling, despite from the fact that it's kind of uncomfortable in the beginning, but you'll get super, super used to it. Um, but it has a lot of oral health benefits. So definitely try out something like this. And this came in a glass bottle and all GU Organics products, I think, come in plastic-free packaging. Staying in the oral area? I would also like to talk about tongue cleaners because I have this, it's completely made of metal which means that you can wash it and use it indefinitely and how you use it, and then you clean your tongue with it. It's something that I use not every day but I do like to use it from time to time when especially you can see that stuff builds up and your mouth is gross and you know everyday life. Molly is... She could not bear the fact that she was not in the bed, so here we go. The thing that I talked about in my what's in my bag that I'm going to talk about now as well are plastic-free hair ties. The thing with normal hair ties is that they contain plastic and they cannot be recycled or reused. Or they can be reused, they cannot be recycled and if they break they just, they're, they're waste. And I've done like, I think it's kind of a classic zero waste thing that if you find a hair tie on the street you pick it up. I put it in my freezer for a week and then I use it because you might as well. Same with bobby pins and stuff. But uh, when I had to get new hair ties, I wanted to get a sustainable thing um, and vote with my money, I feel. Um, so these are completely compostable. These are completely natural and contain no synthetics, which I think is cool. That was very underwhelming. <laughs> Yeah, this is kind of a bigger tip and it's not something that's completely zero waste either necessarily but it is something that reduces plastic. Whenever you have to get a product, whether it's a foundation, a concealer, a lipstick, a eyeshadow, anything, try to look for a product that comes as a refillable for a palette instead of like a completely new packaged product. Something that looks like this. These palette refillables will generally be much less packaged and therefore there will be less plastic, there will be less waste. Something that I've used quite a lot in the past, I don't really do it that much anymore though, but maybe I should because I'm starting to break out again, but using rose water as a facial cleanser. I actually have, like, it's completely new, this flask of rose water. I found it at my local greengrocers in glass because a lot of the times I've seen it in plastic and it's not really what we want. But if you can find rose water in glass, this is a really, really good and healthy face cleanser. And it's like two quid. And lastly, our good old trusty safety razor. A safety razor is a zero waste plastic free alternative to disposable razors. This is much better to use, it's much more environmental friendly and with a little bit of practice it's much easier as well, I promise you. Um, I have two or three videos about safety razors here on my channel so if you're interested in the specifics of a safety razor you can go and watch them as well. But if you just needed a quick reminder, here it is. 
By the way, all the links to the products that I can find um, or recipes or whatnot will be left down below. So if you're interested in any of these things, go and check out more uh, in the description. This was all for my list of zero waste beauty hacks and products. I hope that you liked it. If you did, leave this video a thumbs up. You can also give me your zero waste beauty hacks and tips down below in the comments. I'm sure there's lots of stuff that I didn't get to mention. Um, but then I can make a part two video of this if you're interested in that. So please let me know. Thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day. Take good care of yourselves and see you guys in my next video. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys helped me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!